Hi everyone, my name is Marinx Pasovic and in this video I'll show you how to implement an email confirmation functionality with ASP.NET Core Identity and Web API. This is an important part of the user registration functionality and with it we allow our users to confirm their emails and prove that they are the owners of the provided email accounts. In this video you will see how you can modify the already implemented registration and the authentication logic from my previous videos of this series. So, let's move on with the project. After we check the email confirmed column in the ASP.NET users table, we can see that our users don't have email confirmed. To change that and support the email verification process, I have to modify the authenticate action first. But before I move on, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. Also, Check out our Blazor course to create client c -sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Now, let's continue with the action modification. Let me remove this part first and split it into a few logical blocks because I will have a few different responses to return to the client app. First, I will check if the user exists at all. And if that's the case, I will simply return bad request with the invalid request message. On the other hand, if a user exists, I will check if that user has verified their email. I can do that by awaiting the user manager's is email confirmed async method and providing the user as an argument. This method returns true or false, indicating whether the user's email is confirmed. If that's not the case, I will return an unauthorized result with the new auth response DTO object where I will populate the error message property with the email is not confirmed message. Now, after these previous checks, I can check the user's password. Again, let's use await here and call the user manager .check password async method where I have to provide the user as the first argument and then the user's password. If the password is wrong, I will return an unauthorized response once again and populate it with the new auth response DTO object where I will set the error message property to the invalid authentication message. Great, that's all I have to do in this action. Now I can run the app and try to log in using Postman. You can see here the admin user I created in one of my previous videos and I can send a request. Since the email is not confirmed, we can see an appropriate response message. So for now, all works great. Now, I have to provide a way for the user to verify their email. To do that, I have to modify the registration flow a bit. But before I do that, I have to modify the user for registration DTO class first. Here, next to all the previous properties, I will add another string property named client URI. Since the email service will be included here, as you can see from the solution, the client app needs to provide a URI where the user will be navigated to see the confirmation message about the verification flow. For example, something like this. Also, that page will be used to process the email verification logic. Ok, with this done, let me navigate to the register user action and add the required changes. After I'm sure the new user has been created successfully, I need an email confirmation token here. And I can generate one by using the user manager's generate email confirmation token async method with the user as an argument. Also, I will create a new param variable to store my query string parameters. And for that, I will use a new dictionary with both string parameters. The first one will have the token key and the token value. And the second one will have an email key and the email value. Next, I need a callback link and I will create it using the query helpers class and calling the add query string method, where I have to provide a client URI property as an argument and then the query parameters as a dictionary. 
after that i can create my new message and use my custom message class that accepts a user's email as the first argument the title of the email message as the second one the callback link as the third one and finally i will add null here for the attachment part the last thing I have to do here is to use my email sender service and call the send email async method to send my message to the user. This is the service I introduced in my previous video where I also explain how to enable a Gmail account to receive email messages from my application. And of course how to obtain the app password from Gmail. Ok, with all of this done, I can run my app again and test this. I have already removed the code maze test user from the database and now I can send this request. And I got 201, so everything is good. Let's just check my email. And as you can see, I have a proper link with the token and email query parameters. Excellent. With all this finished, all I have to do is add a new action to verify the email confirmation token. I will make this one a GET request with the part of the URI, of course. Then I need a public async task I action result action named email confirmation. And here I will use two query parameters to receive the email and the token. Inside the action, I will try to fetch the user using the email a client tab sent in the request. If I can't find that user, I will return a bad request with the invalid email confirmation request message. On the other hand, I will create a new variable here and await the user manager.confirm email async method, which validates if the email confirmation logic token matches the specified user. So let's pass that user and the token. Now I can check the return result. And if it wasn't successful, I will again return the same bad request. Finally, I will return OK. Awesome. Let's test this entire flow now with the user already removed from the database. So I will send the registration request first. And I got 201. After I check my email, I can see the link here. Now, let's assume the user clicks the email link and the client app sends the request with both the encoded token and the email. As you can see here, I have a request, just let's paste those two query parameters and send it. And I got 200 OK. So let's check the database. And you can see the user has the email confirmed this time. Finally, I can try to log in again. And this time I am properly authenticated. Nicely done. You see how easily we can improve the registration logic in our web API application by introducing one single action and a few small modifications. So if you like the video, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel a lot and supports me as well. Also, you can hit that bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.